Jonathan Lee Riches Investigates. I am at David's Park in Waukesha, Wisconsin. Waukesha, Wisconsin. Why am I here? May 31st, 2014. The Slender Man stabbings. Two 12-year-olds lured their friend here to the park. And then they went over there into the woods and stabbed their friend. It was a big case. It was a big case. Check this park out. I'm going to spin the camera around. So it was May 31st, 2014. Two 12 year olds, Anissa Weir, Morgan Geyser, lured their friend Peyton to this area, to the park. And when they lured her to the park, they took her over there to the woods. And I'm going to walk you down to the woods. It's a nice park. It's a nice park here. You see a baseball field. We'll go over. It's along a busy, uh, busy road. This is Garfield Avenue. Garfield Avenue. And East Avenue. Garfield Avenue and East Avenue. It's a problem. I don't know, a little bit west of Milwaukee. This is like a suburb of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'd say about 20 minutes west of Milwaukee. So I don't support violence in any way. These two individuals were 12 years old at the time and were tried for their crimes. And actually, they both got time in a mental institution mental institution one is serving 40 years the other is serving 25 one got just got released the other one was trying to get released recently and withdrew that because their doctors might have her doctor might not have recommended her release let's spin the camera around check, check out the neighborhood so here's the neighborhood here Morgan got 40 years and Anissa got 25 years and, and Anissa was released last year. So in 2021, she was released. They both were in a mental hospital. They were both uh, got sentenced to a uh, Winnebago Mental Health State Hospital. Morgan is still in the mental hospital. Again, she tried to get petition for early release or petition to release and the judge wanted to hear from her doctors and then the doctors came up with an analysis and then suddenly her attorneys withdrew that release. So I don't know if there were some damaging things or she's not ready to be released. This was 2014, so you're talking seven eight years ago so nissa had uh 25 years she got out now i don't know how long she has to be under the supervision and here is a sign the park so two 12 year olds in this park and then they took her over here and it was a bizarre case because they claim the Slenderman the Slenderman told them to do it so they most likely probably walked from the park here down this sidewalk or that sidewalk or this way and we're approach, approaching Big Ben Road and the townhomes was right in here right in here this is the wooded area where Peyton I'm not gonna say her last name because 
I don't, you know, she was a juvenile at the time, and her name was Peyton. I saw recently she actually spoke, but I'm sure she has lifetime scars because of this. This was the woods. So I walk across the street into the wooded area here. Assuming they went right in there. Let's see if I can get in there anyway. There's a sign there. Let me see what it says. It might say no trespassing. No, it doesn't say that. Let's see. So they went into the woods here. Into the woods. I don't know how far in. And I'll just kind of, kind of go. Wet. It was raining earlier. Possibly in here. Somewhere. Twelve-year-old, two twelve-year-old girls did this to their own friend. Definitely mental illness involved. Yeah, it's, it goes back. Definitely you see trash back here. So people been back here. Yeah. You can definitely walk back here, but... It happened back here, somewhere, right off the road here. You know, these are just kids running around in the neighborhood, going in and out of the woods. You know, bystanders probably don't think nothing suspicious in that moment. It's just kids out there playing, right? Condos here. I didn't do my research, but I'm assuming they lived in the neighborhood here. I don't know where 12 year old girls would be able to go that far away. Probably the neighborhood park they play in, David's Park. So they could have lived somewhere within a block of this area. I don't think 12 year old kids are going too far away from their home so let me know what you think we say no to violence should these two should have should they have gotten prison you think they should have been tried as adults or tried as juveniles what's your take you know if two 12 year olds commit a murder should they be tried as adults also, do you think their sentence is too much? 25, 40 years. Now, I don't know how that works in reference to good time or they have to fulfill the whole sentence, but they can be out on, you know, if they get out of the mental institution, like one of them did, are they subjected to the court system, for, you know, supervising them for extended period of time all the way up to her 25 years or is there good time involved? Do you think they should have got a less punishable sentence, maybe in a juvenile facility with less time? Do you think the mental health institution will actually help them or make them worse? What's your take? Let me know your take. I'm um, interested in uh, hearing. Also, this park over here has a jungle gym. Let's just go over here real quick. Looks like there's bathrooms. So it's a nice, clean park. It's a nice, clean Park. Surprise no one's out. This is a end of the summer day. It was raining earlier, but the sun is out now and I don't see anyone in the park. I see people can play soccer. 
play soccer over there. The pavilion. And a jungle gym. So here it is. Here's the park. Here is the area. This is Waukesha. Waukesha? Keisha, Wisconsin. Subscribe to my channel, like, hit the notification button. I travel around the country covering true, true crime. Places where bad things happen, I like to just go to the scene and check it out, document it. I've been all over the United States covering cases from the West Coast all the way to the East Coast, from the northern part of the United States all the way down to the South, all over, and I'll continue to do that. Interesting perspective on crimes, my own thought. I like to interview people. I like to talk. I like to sometimes stir the pot, particularly people that don't come forward and give information when I feel like they should, in particular um, missing person cases, missing person cases where persons of interest are involved and they clam up and they want to stay silent. I kind of try to do my best to get answers on unsolved crimes. That's the value system that I'm trying to uh, do trying to bring awareness, make a difference. Hopefully this video helped someone in some way. Thanks for viewing. See you guys soon. See you at the next crime scene.